organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Iowa TV. A real solution or a vague proposal? What's next for campus advocates after Sally Mason released her plan to address sex assaults on campus? And from the dance marathon to bone marrow donation, one student's journey to save a life. And in sports, Courtside is on tap with fall highlights from the Hawks win on Sunday afternoon. Daily Iowa TV is ready to go. Good evening, I'm Erin Faust. And I'm Melissa Dawkins, and joining us tonight is Daily Iowan TV reporter Gabriella Dunn. Gabriella has been following the protest on campus against President Sally Mason and the outrage over the number of sexual assaults on campus this year. On Friday, the Board of Regents expressed concern about Sally Mason's comments and scolded her for a lack of communication with the board. Mason released a six-point plan addressing sexual assaults on campus at that meeting. So, Gabby, the big question is, what's next? Right, well, after the university released the plan, the original protesters started prepping for a new grassroots movement to get the entire community on board with their message that sexual assault must be stopped. This is the same group that protested at Mason's speech last Sunday. Even though UI President Sally Mason released a six-point plan to address sexual assaults on campus, student activists say their work is still far from over. Out of the recent efforts, a new group called ROAR is forming to promote zero tolerance within the community. It would be irresponsible of us to trust the statements of President Mason. Change comes from below. It's going to change, it's going to change on this campus because we insist on it and we continue to put pressure and make changes. They feel that the language of President Mason's six-point plan is somewhat ambiguous, kind of leaving concerns about the lack of concrete action. There have been seven years of sort of cover-ups and nepotism in regards to sexual assault numbers, what's being, what's out and what's, what remains hidden. UI spokesman Tom Moore told us in an email that UI leaders are dedicating a great deal of time and resources to this effort. Specifics are in the process of being determined and developments will be shared publicly as they become available. As part of her plan, President Mason authorized the purchase of another one of these night ride vehicles. But protesters say that buying another vehicle is not getting to the root of the issue. You should not have to go to where the vehicle is. You should be picked up where you are. So adding another vehicle to that fleet is not solving the problem. The original protesters will keep promoting zero tolerance throughout the community. Gabriella Dunn, Daily Iowan TV. And another group of protesters say they plan to demonstrate every Monday on the Pentecrest starting tomorrow. Thanks, Gabriella. Well, keep following the story. Pick up a copy of the Daily Iowan every day this week for our series focusing on sex assaults on campus. University of Iowa student government is teaming up with the Board of Regents to get insight from students on efficiency, efficiency suggestions for the university. The board wants to improve communication with students and gain insight into what needs to be changed to better student success on campus. UISG President Catherine Valde says students are sending feedback based on personal experience and they are looking forward to receiving more comments in the week to come. A group of UI advocates are celebrating a legislative breakthrough they helped push for in Washington, D.C. Members of One Iowa want to make sure communities in sub-Saharan Africa have reliable electricity. UI students and one members from across the country met with congressional representatives last week to push for the legislation. The bill passed the House of Representatives Thursday morning and Congress is slated to vote on the measure in the next few months. The dialogue addressing racial stereotypes on campus continues. Phil Yu, famous for his blog Angry Asian Man, stopped by the Courier Multipurpose Room to discuss Asian stereotypes that permeate society. Funded by the Asian American Coalition as well as several other student organizations. The event also featured an open mic session and group discussions. The coalition says they want to foster awareness about stereotyping issues on the UI campus. 
Students at the University of Iowa have the opportunity to change lives through bone marrow donation. Tara Simpson is standing by with today's Medical Minute. Every year, dance marathon participants have a chance to get off their feet for five minutes and join the Be the Match Registry for bone marrow donation. Our own Medical Minute reporter Megan Sanchez went out this week to find out how likely it is that you could be the match if you sign up. Take a look. Hannah Johnson had no idea what she was getting into when she signed up for the Be The Match registry during Dance Marathon 19. She did it for a break from her feet. I didn't think that I would ever get picked. Little did she know that she would soon be saving a life. Hannah donated bone marrow to a baby girl in August of 2013. The donation was successful. The kind of bone marrow donation that most people have heard of is the kind where they inject it out of your hip. However, 75% of donations do not occur this way. And Hannah was one of those 75%. She was hooked up to a machine and donated through peripheral blood stem cell donation, which is similar to donating plasma. Julie Darner works with the University of Iowa Marrow Donor Program. She said the myth about bone marrow donation is that it's very painful. However, this is not the case. Bone marrow is an outpatient surgical procedure. It's done under anesthesia, so the donor's not going to feel anything while the marrow's being removed. Now here's what I wanted to know. How likely is it that you would be the match? Let's take a look at the numbers. One in 40 U.S. members will be called for additional testing. One in 300 will be selected as a best match, and one in 540 will go on to donate. So even though it's a small chance, Hannah was a match, and you could be too. Megan Sanchez, Daily Iowan TV. Each year, the University of Iowa Donor Programs recruits 2,000 new donors. To find out how you can help, check out their website. Back to you two at the desk. Thanks, Tiara. And now we're turning it over to Hannah Thompson for a look at your weather. Well, winter storm Titan looks as though it will be striking again, this time just south of us and into the east coast. Titan has wreaked havoc this winter for different regions of the U.S., and the storm will be continuing to plow through the states, covering the Midwest, Mid-South, and East Coast regions with snow, ice, and extreme winds. Now here in Iowa City, we can expect tomorrow to have extremely low temperatures starting the day out at negative 6 degrees. We will break zero in the afternoon with temps rising to 9 and clear skies, and then falling back down to 3 degrees for the evening. The rest of the week is looking up temperature-wise as we expect Tuesday and Wednesday to be in the upper 20s with a slight chance for snow on Wednesday. We will see temps above freezing for Thursday, and by the end of the week, they will hopefully reach 40. That's all the weather I have for you guys today. Make sure you're covering up and keeping warm the next couple of days. These temperatures can be very dangerous, but we'll hopefully be headed towards warmer days soon. Melissa and Aaron, back to you. Thanks, Hannah. Despite the freezing temps, local disc golfer golfers gathered together this weekend for more than just a regular tournament. Saturday marked Iowa City's fifth annual Ice Bowl, which is an event that raises money and donations for local food banks. Events are held across the nation and often attract professional level disc golfers. All the proceeds raised are donated to the Johnson County Crisis Center and Food Bank. 19s, $50,000 in prizes, and one night to show off their best moves. The UI Indian Student Alliance hosted the 11th annual Nakde Raho Saturday night. It's one of the largest dance competitions in the Midwest, and Daily Iowan TV reporter Greta Miley was there to take us behind the scenes. Bright colors, shimmering beads, and bare feet populated the IMU for Nakde Raho 2014 on Saturday night where nine nationally ranked teams battled for a total of $5,500 worth of prizes. It's a very big competition, so a ton of teams apply and then we choose the best. The nine teams, traveling from as close as Chicago to as far as Virginia, competed in three different South Asian styles of dance for three style-based prizes and one overall prize. One Chicago-based dancer has traveled around the country to three other competitions prior, performing a raw style routine with his team. It's kind of modernized now to become faster paced and high energy. And, so, um, and we've been working on the routine since probably August. The Alliance said the scores were closer than ever before. But in the end, the dancers team took first place in both the Ross category and overall, continuing their winning streak. Greta Miley, Daily Iowa TV. The winners now set their sights on a national competition in April.
It's Sunday, it's courtside, and that means Cody Goodwin is standing by with everything on Iowa's 20th win of the season today. Thank you, Melissa. Big win for the Hawks inside the recently unfriendly confines of Carver Hawkeye Arena on Sunday afternoon. Cody Goodwin in the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio, and we're ready to get this thing started. Black and Gold are looking to avoid the offer for the week coming into this one after losing their last three conference games. Purdue turning out to be the perfect medicine for the ailing Hawks. Daily Iowa TV Sports' Josh Bolander is courtside for this one and has the extended highlights. Josh? Sellout crowd braving the bitter Iowa cold to see 19-9 Iowa try to snap a three-game skid in Big Ten play against the Purdue Boilermakers at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Things looking good for the Hawks early. Mike sell the hoop and the contact to start things off for the black and gold. But Matt Pater's squad not backing down the Boilers. Kendall Stevens with three of his 12 points on the day. Fran McCaffrey not pleased with his team's effort early on. Maybe some heavy legs from the Hawks playing their third game of the week, but they would respond. First, it's Devin Marble with a step back Jay and then Jared Utah giving the visitors the business on this throwdown. Hometown crowd loving it. Hawks up for 2016 with just under 10 to play in the first half. And that would set off a little bit of a dunk parade in Carver. First, it's Raphael Davis with two of his team high 18. And then it's Gabriel Olashaney for the Hawks. For his old anything you can do, I can do better slam with authority. For the Hawkeye defense extends the lead just before the half. Marble refusing to play nice. The rip, the post routes at Aaron White. Hawks go into the break up 13, 50 to 37. That wouldn't last though. Boilers on fire coming out after the intermission. Tyrone Johnson flying down the court off the Mike Cassell miss for this easy two. And then it's Davis again off the Adam Woodbury tap back. Good intentions, bad execution. Boilers out and running and just like that we have a ball game. Hawks halftime lead cut in half 52 to 45. More from the visitors just a few minutes later. It's the big fella, AJ Hammond. Ooping the alley from Ronnie Johnson and team high five assists from the West Lafayette product. Boilers with a 64-60 lead. Matt Painter happy with that. It wouldn't last though. Too much depth from the boys from Carver. First it's the seven footer Adam Woodbury with the back down and jump poke over Hammond. Opposite hand too. Pretty impressive. Speaking of impressive though, Cassell with the shake and dime to Aaron White. In the corner, three for 15 from the land of plenty in conference play. Who cares? Trey in, and finally it's Roy Devin Marble. The campaign has begun. Two of his game high 21. The hoop and the harm. Final score in this one: Iowa 83, Purdue 76. All the talk post game about Iowa's potential conference player of the year. You know he's just so versatile. Um, I wouldn't say he's the level of Evan Turner, but he's probably the closest thing to compare since Evan Turner in our league. Just because he's 6'6", he can do so many things. Um, the people that have his size don't have his skill set. Uh, his consistency has been amazing at both ends of the floor. You know, he doesn't rattle. I think what you're seeing is a guy that is playing with a great level of confidence, you know, due to the fact that he's, you know, taking full advantage of the experience. Thanks, Josh. A big reason for the turnaround on the hardwood, the Hawk star guard Roy Devin Marble. The, senior ga the senior's game high 21 points, enough for even Fran McCaffrey to make his pitch for Marble winning the conference's player of the year. You know, I play him at the two, I play him at the one, I play him at the three. He guards bigger guys, he guards smaller guys. I isolate him, I post him up. I set him up on ball screen action, I set him up off staggers. He plays a ton of minutes, he's going to have the ball late. Uh, I think he, I think he's the guy, I mean, right now. Our weekly Five Things segment making an appearance on the show tomorrow along with an exclusive interview with Iowa's three seniors as they look a seal a trip to the big dance for the first time since 2006. But for now, back to you two at the desk. Thanks so much. Here's what's coming up in tomorrow's pages of the Daily Iowan. Speaking up and speaking out, Venezuelan students at the University of Iowa address the protests happening in their home country. And moving on and moving out, residence hall occupancy is dropping. Connect with Daily Iowan TV anytime by checking us out on Facebook and following us on Twitter. Daily Iowan TV will be right back here tomorrow. Good night.